hi all and happy saturday so it's good to be back this is week 30 and it's so funny my hands are so expressive it's like all the highs and so excited that we're like on week 30 <laughs> so funny oh boy so week 30 is seasonal color palette so we're going to talk about that then we'll do a flip through the journal so you can see what i did for the the finish of last week and then we're going to get down to the table because I've got some fun stuff planned today. So one of the things I've found over the years is that my color palette alters with the sun. It's like the Analima procession. It also happens when I travel. I can have an instant response to my environment. At times it's very shocking as I reach for colors in my travel pouch and nothing seems right. Do you know how you often have you travel with the colors you've been using and what have you? And then have you ever had that happen? You go to another destination and you're going to pull out your work and like none of the colors seem to be right. You're like, what just happened? And a lot of times it's because you're being influenced by that new environment and just everything is a different kind of color palette so it became clear to me over the years that our color choices are very instinctive shifting with our um our realization so they kind of go back and forth with whatever we're realizing about ourselves or environment you know and so um and it's based upon us encountering external stimuli you know they just shift based on what's coming and kind of going in our environment so during the winter months, um, you know, for some of us, it's winter. And for others, when it's winter, like in Australia, it's summer. And yet, you know, we're, I have found that I can be here in the winter months and take a trip to Australia to visit my friends there. And instantly, instantly, there's just a complete change, you know, and all I did was take a 16 hour flight. And before you know it, I'm like, in the summer and my whole palette has changed. So this week I encourage you to pay special attention to your color choices and create a new color palette based upon what you are discovering about the colors you are reaching for and how you may begin using them. So really pay attention because now we're going into late summer as we move into August. For many, I know the weather begins to change in August and especially by September. We're, you know, and I think we all are starting to kind of get into that fall mood you know after it's summer for a while and it's hot for a while you kind of like okay I'm ready for things to kind of start cooling down again especially out here in Arizona so you know you start wanting to reach for warmer colors and even in late summer I think because the sun is so high and um, I think your color palette becomes warmer in August than it was let's say in early June right um, so really pay attention to that and sometimes you'll have the same colors but there'll be just shifts in shade or tone you know, um, sometimes it'll be cooler, those colors, and then you'll find you're, you're searching for warmer colors in the same, you know, the same color family. So pay attention to that and start really noting what your color palettes are looking like. And maybe you might discover some slight shifts in your current color palette with just with the idea that you're bringing attention to, oh yeah, you know, I, I am seeing that I'm choosing different colors. So colors that may have been dominant a few months ago are now rarely used or you are using um, or the colors you're using are not inspiring you at the time. So it's difficult to finish a project or maybe you're picking up a project that you were working on a couple of months ago and you're like, okay, yeah, let me go ahead and finish this. And I've had this happen to me as well, but I can't get into the colors. And I'm like, why, you know? And it's because it's a color palette, you know, from a few months ago when that color I was more inspired by. And so I've learned not to push myself through color, uh, through projects, just wait for me to kind of get in to the feeling of that particular project again. So I'll just put it back on the shelf, you know, and come back to it when um, I'm more inspired by the colors. And I've learned that over time because I've missed up a lot of projects early on, um, just sort of making myself finish them. And then just like, I'm just, I just can't have it happen. So probably me saying this, you're probably, it's probably an aha moment for a, a number of you like, oh, that's what the problem has been. Or like, oh yeah, I've had that happen to me. You know, that kind of thing. So yeah, go easy on yourself. Um, so sometimes just like that slight color change in the color palette can do this to you. For instance, I've noticed that my color palettes become very monochromatic, relying on black and white, which I love and I use throughout the year. However, more creamy tones and grays seem to move in. So a lot of times I like clean my palette. So like, like it's like cleaning your, 
your physical palate. You know, when you think about you've had a very spicy food, so it might suck on a limer a little bit to sort of clean the plat palate for something that may be a little sweeter um, as a dessert or something. You know how we do that. And I think I do the same. I know I do the same thing with my color palettes. A lot of times when I'm shifting color palettes, I can instantly tell because I go back to black and white or creamier and gray tones, like more monotones. And when I'm going into, when everything I'm desiring is monotone or black and white, I'm like, I'm ready to go through a palette change. That's generally all that, that always seems to happen to me. And it wasn't until I started observing it that I noticed it up to that point, I didn't really, I didn't even know. So maybe for you, it's a particular color that you really love. Let's say purple is like a really favorite color. And so, but you use other colors, but you find yourself going back and relying on pur purple. Pay attention to that. It means you're probably having a color, a palette change. Um, and you go back to what's familiar, what's comfortable as you're adjusting to working with new colors. So just a little thing I've noticed and observed. So see if that's, that holds true for you. Um, so also reds for me become, as I love red, but what happens with reds is that sometimes they'll be like baked pomegranates and then, you know, or frosted raspberries. And my greens that are normally celadon can be more like a crackled jade or a dried moss. Just depending on what time of the year it is, they'll definitely shift. So knowing this, I definitely will alter my colors and my seasonal color mood. So enjoy discovering your altered color palettes this week. Just see what comes up for you. Or, you know, don't force it. Just kind of pay attention to what you're um, grabbing. And one of the ways you can have fun with this is you sit down, you're in your studio, grab some things that you did earlier in the year or even flip through your, your journal. This is a great example of it because when you flip through your journal, you're going to actually see how there are these change. You see how, now this is a perfect example. You see how I was into the, these really warm tones was going on and then look, boom, I go right into these black and whites um, here. And I'm in my familiar colors. And then look, I go right into these brights, which I'm not, you know, like I love the brights, but I don't like just do brights all the time, right? So you can see that I was kind of cleansing my palette here. And you'll notice it. So go through your book and see what comes up for you. And you'll see these pushes and pulls um, of what's familiar and what's not, I figured I would see it. So I went into mark making after all these really bright colors. So see, I have a lot of black and white in here now. Some colors still mixed in, but you see the point I'm making? So just take note of what you're just, so flipping through your journal is ideal because this is showing you the trends of what you've been working on all year. So while we're flipping through, let's look at where we are. Come a long way here. Okay, so. This is what we did last week, working with fabrics. It was nice to hear that a number of you like were really um, inspired to collage with fabrics. You hadn't really thought about collaging with them before and what have you. So yeah, so this is what I did on Patreon. Now, this I use, I use a lot of baby wipes just to clean my palettes and clean up and stuff. And then it's all this great paint on there, so I save them. And so this is an example of a baby wipe that um you know i've glued down it's that's a lot of nice texture this is a tea bag with some more of the baby wipe here this piece of linen fabric and this is in our mark making but you can see here where this was a print of um a painting on canvas and then that next to the linen it's funny how this is a photocopy and this is the actual thing but you know you have that push and pull of uh, a similar type of texture. This is some more of the baby wipe in here. And then this is some linen fabric that I use a decolorant to remove the color and I painted up pages of this. We're, we're using it in our book project. Um, so yeah, that's what I ended up doing there. And one more thing, we're gonna be working with my new stencils which released this week, they release on Thursday, you're seeing this video on Saturday, so they would have already released. Um, and this, they'll be on special through 
Tuesday. So you guys will have plenty of time to go take a look at them and see if there's anything that you want to get out of my new stencil line. I'm so excited about these because these come from my Hearth Code series. So I did stencils that reflect all the cultures. I really did a kind of a cosmology of cultures all over the world. And then I kind of did this compilation of symbols. Um, so we'll be working with these. This is the, this is the one. This right here is going to be the free, the one that's going to be the free one. So there's always a free stencil that you can't purchase, but it comes with purchase. And then look at this one where I actually use Seth's um, embossing powders that we've used before. Look how gorgeous this is. And this is on some jelly paint printed uh, background. So I'll show these to you, but let me just tell you the deal. So the deal is you'll get 25% off of your entire purchase. You get a free stencil with orders over $50. So it has to be 50 after you get the discount, but you're going to get a lot of stuff for that. Um, it starts, like I said, Thursday, but it's going to be good through Monday the 26th, so it's Monday. And the code that you want to use is July 25, all capital letters, July 25. And I will have this underneath the video, but just telling you the details. Um, so international shipping is $19.30. Um, Canadian is $11.99. And I don't know if U.S. I don't know what the U.S. shipping is. It'll be on the site. But um, so, yeah, the link for it will be underneath there as well. So if you're interested in getting any of these, they're a lot of fun. So, yeah, they'll be on special. And so now we're going to go down to the table and we are going to do some printing today. So I've got something fun. See you in a All minute. All right, so let's get rolling here. Um, we're gonna be, these These are just samples that I did when I was playing with the stencils with my patrons and we kind of had a jelly printing session just playing with them. And I did them all in black, basically just to see the prints and just see how they were looking. This is a combination of several, of two different stencils. So a lot of times I work with just bits and pieces of the stencil, like you don't have to work with the whole thing. And that's the beauty of it. Let's say if you like this, this shape here, you know, you can just print that. You don't have to print the whole stencil. So think in bits and pieces. This is one of the larger ones, but like it's a lot going on here. Like there's lots of just bits that you could print. So I'll just do a quick one. This is one of my faves. I love this one. This is a combination of stencils here. So these are all circles, cycles, um, you know, cycles of time, circles. I mean, the idea of sort of the, floor, the, the floral look, but more, you know, more ancient, um, old, sort of old world or um, something that looks more indigenous or the sacred feminine. That's kind of what I was going for in some of the marks that we're doing here. And these are just from lots of different cultures. Mayan, um, our, you know, Aborigine, American, um, Native Americans. Um, this is just... This is old Europe types of um, spirals and um, labyrinths. This is sort of my take on the Grecian key, you know, and, and, and I try to just deal with shape and moving the shapes in such a way they'd be interesting. But there again, you can use bits of it. I just love the circle and the cross, is, you know, the idea of that. That's very iconic in most cultures around the world. But here, if you just wanted to use that image or if you just wanted to print this or if you just wanted to print a bit of it to kind of create, um, you know, you can. These zigzags, that's just so iconic, zigzags. This is several put together. Um, so there we are. That's basically the stencils. And then we have this. There's one that just has all, like all the shapes on it, just but smaller. So I always like to create in different sizes because a lot of times you may want to repeat. So that's why I did this one. This is a good one that just a, a good overall one to throw in your bag along with whatever you choose. Because let me show you like. Okay, hold up here. 
just like this one <clears throat> so you know you have this size but then in this one it's a smaller version of it so you could just print just that so that way when you're working in your journals in your books or on whatever project jelly printing project or something you want to use these images it's nice to have them in different sizes so this one is good because you can see I repeated a lot of the sizes um, but I scaled them down so that um, you know they would be able to be reused in smaller sizing and I just love that this is just just this reminds me of like chalice well or something like that just a big labyrinth with water that comes in to the middle of the labyrinth and then goes back out again it just this is just iconic old Europe as well as a lot of the other indigenous um, as well so just wanted to show you what they would look what some of them look like so when we're working with them you kind of have an idea and but what we're going to do you see i've been doing a lot of painting i've just gone from one project to another so i've been working on this book we've been doing this book over in patreon i'll show you real quick because this is what's down there and this is our cover this is the book we made it's a concertina folded book so it can be displayed a lot of different ways or you know you can open it up we have a lot of fun in patreon and i do a lot of book projects because my love is book as art and really pushing the idea of book as art not so much just as a journal or a junk journal or you know that kind of thing but art um and so this is a cover that we've made for it and it's not finished now I just finished painting it and we're gonna <clears throat> i have a really surprise closure for this but then i use some fabrics and some vintage papers and yeah so that's why my desk is looking a mess it's over here because we're finishing that up but what we're going to do today is we're going to take some mark making so i did i pre-did the pages so we could get right into it but you guys have been doing mark making with me and if you're new to this video just go back about a month or so ago and look up a video it'll say mark making it'll be week something but it'll say mark making and then there we played around with making a lot of different marks so I wanted to get some basic mark making on the pages because you know I believe in layering <clears throat> and we're going to really kind of make these papers look old and just like something that you could have found in the caves of, of France that the Cathars left or in a pyramid in, you know, um, on the Yucatan Peninsula or something at Gobegi Tepli or, you know, that's my thing. So I like recreating that. Um, so one of the things that I want to show you is I'm going to pull some of them out. Um just to kind of get some ready and what we're going to do is we're going to work with pull this and uh let me just kind of i want to show you that like with this one and this one they're different so though you know, I have a smaller size, so this fits, and they're all designed to fit on our jelly plate. So this one sits, fits the three by five. So if you want to print with them on the jelly plate, it'll cover the whole plate up. That way you don't get over the over painting. So you can literally use these as stamps. Um, this is fits on our six by six. But you can see this one is different. They're similar, but different. So the size will change. And it changes a little bit. So you don't feel like, you know, you can get two different sizes and they're similar but not the, exactly the same. So I like doing that as well. So I'm just gonna pull some here. Just get a few. And see, this is the one that has them all on it. So that's gonna fit your eight by 10. So these all fit the eight by 10. Let's use this one and we'll use this one too. Okay, so we're gonna start with these. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to be working with the gesso. We're going to be using white gesso um, because I really want, like I said, these to look um, old. <laughs> so we're going to be using the white gesso. Um, I'm going to use these sponges and we're actually going to just 
Um, just get a piece of paper here. We are going to use this, the sponges to create our images with some white gesso. And then we're going to use our coffee staining and our spray dyes and stuff to further our layering. So I'm just going to grab two sheets right now and I'm going to lay them. Let me just move my gesso out the way you guys don't need to see that. Um, okay, so I'm going to lay these side by side because I don't, I really, I like patterns to be broken up. So we're going to lay this down in such a way that we'll get a little bit on one sheet and a little bit on the other. And I like to work with my images like that so that, you know, you know, you just don't have the whole big image there. And it's, I think it's a little more interesting. So oftentimes I split my stencils up when I'm working like this between two pages. And here, if you don't want the whole stencil, you know, you can skip pieces of it. You can just, I really encourage you to make these stencils your own. There may be pieces in them that you just really love and you just want to use that piece over and over again. Do so like really, because these are, these are images that I've done a composite of from all different cultures. So I've been inspired by, um, images that I have found in my research, right? So I've figured out a way to sort of like make those patterns my own um, for the purposes of creating the stencils. And so I invite you to do the same and you may see some of my images and then you may see them reflected in, um, let's see, I'm just kind of put this off over here so you see what I'm doing I'm just taking the papers and just using this white gesso you could use um, paint too but I just like the way gesso absorbs the coffee and the other um, spray dyes and stuff that I'm going to use so Let's get a bit of this so we can kind of do that off page some. So we're just going to fill it up with our images. So you may see some of these, you know, like, as you, you know, you may come across stuff and say, Oh, it looks like that's, I've seen this here. That looks like something I've seen in the caves of France or in a Mayan pyramid or in the, you know, in the American Southwest. And yeah, because I've been inspired by all of those images and I've tried to kind of create these composites of them. And I invite you to do the same. Well, that's going to be good there. Um, let's see. So we have all of that. Let's just put something like this over here. And then we'll put this aside to dry. And we'll go to some more pages. So basically... We're just going, I'm going to show you this technique of, and I know we did a little bit of this with our scripting. Remember how I had us, um, we did it using, let me see, the white, uh, let's put this here. We used white paint and we scripted it with it. And then we did the coffee staining and stuff on a jelly print. So it's a similar concept to that, but we're just using the stencils. And you, of course, can do this with any stencils you already have. Definitely. Okay. Okay. So let's put this down there. Let's grab another couple of sheets 
and get some more images. This is one's good. I did some circles, you know, just created some circles on a page. So let's grab this piece, kind of do this a little off center, maybe like that. And you'll notice that when the way I created these stencils, I really tried to avoid those connector lines. Some of them will have them in there and I show you how you can paint them out, but I really tried to make the connecting be a part of the design. So I just don't like all those little lines in every design. So, I mean, there's unavoidable at a point in stencils because you have to have some, but like in this one, you can see I really used the design to connect all these pieces so that, you know, it can look a little bit more authentic. But whenever you get those connector lines, I just always say, you know, just paint them in. Once you've done the stencil, you can just paint them in. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'll show you in just a second. Okay. Gonna be good. Let's see. Like this one is a good example. Hold up. What did I do with the? Where did I put the? I'm trying to show you guys. Oh, here they are. Let's see what I did with the. <laughs> so like this one. The, the one that I just used, see how the connectors are like naturally just a part of the design? So aside from right here, like those would be connectors, but I even try to make them so they're, they're not exactly regular, so they really do look irregular, but you can still paint those out. Um, this is an example of one that This one has the connectors throughout it because it was such a intense pattern. But even the way I did them, I try to do them so that they're not exactly connected. But then what I oftentimes do is I just paint them out. So once I've done the print, then I just come back in with the paint, whatever I was using. And I just go through and paint those all out and get rid of them. So that, you know, or sometimes I'll leave a few if it's like a part of the design. But yeah, just to so know that you can come back and paint and get rid of those. I'm a big advocate of that. <clears throat> Let's put this here. So fill our page up. Just do a good job of Oh, I picked Oh, I picked up some color. <laughs> Well, that one went gray. Okay, no problem. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, let's get some of these. That was from the... I think I used ink. So that ink kind of got activated there. It's no problem. I actually like that. That gray is good. It'll just show up differently. But you can do this with paints too. You don't have to use, um, you know, just grabbing some of these. Um, you don't have to use gesso. Or do both and you can see the difference. Um, you can see what the gesso does over what paints do. So you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Why, why I like the gesso. Okay. <clears throat> Just kind of reaching around here. Okay. Let's 
So this is a good one where you can just use bits, one, the top or the bottom of it. So I designed them so that it's like getting <clears throat> the images go together, but they also can be separate. So you get a couple of images <clears throat> on one, you know. <laughs> I try to design the stencils the way I like to work. I like bits and pieces of images and, you know, I don't like, I don't like things to be so, you know, like in stone. I like to be able to work around them a bit. So I try to design this stencil so that you guys could have the same opportunity to, you know, to pull the best of what you like and bits and pieces that don't resonate. You don't have to use them, you know, or you can just use, or you can make your own combination. Because remember, these are... These, the, the whole idea of hearth codes, for those of you who are not familiar with the workshop that I've done on it, and I have that free course that I've offered to everyone. So jump into that free course. The link is below and you'll get an idea of what this is all about. But indigenous images really speak to us on a DNA level. And actually, this has been something that scientists have been able, you know, and people who study psychology and things like that have been able to show um, here digging for one that we um, put this down here that images real we respond to different shapes and um, this one here we do respond to different shapes and patterns and they actually stimulate us at a very deep level um, and they bring up various associations, memory patterns. Um, sometimes they're cultural, emotional, um, spiritual. It's really amazing how that is the case. So there's actually science to all of this. <laughs> and being an anthropologist myself, um, with a focus in art in, in archaeology, found materials, textual materials, images, and um, were really big for me in my studies. Um, symbols, you know, icon iconography, you know, the iconic shapes. Um, Similar. I always was fascinated to see how cultures that really weren't able to speak to each other because of you know they didn't have same technology we have, um, which is assumed, um, still had the same symbols and images and, you know, that basically also meant the same things. So the, you know, like I, I began to think, well, this must be happening on some kind of DNA level, like at a deeper level, we're just, um, coded to, to respond to different things in different ways. So a lot of my work, oh, that's nice. Oh, a lot of my, let's see, I picked up a little bit more of that black, has been dedicated to um, these similarities and just taking note of this. And I've, act, and I've gone on different archaeological expeditions where I specifically would look for similarities in. So let's say um, one of them I went into the re region of um, Central Italy. Went to about 14 different sites that were like all, you know, deep. They're, now they're just kind of deeply locked away in um, <clears throat> like this in the forest and stuff there. But just seeing how you could go from point to point to point and how some of these images would be the same or the writings, you know, you'd find Celtic, you know, sort of symbols or rune type symbols along with Egyptian symbols in central Italy. I just found that so fascinating. So a lot of my research has been around the similarity of symbols and, um, get some of this see if I can I 
Um, yeah, so a lot of these hearth codes are coming out of just years of my own personal research and studies in the field and my own artwork and the things that I like and just the really I was I wanted to create something and this is the first series I have another series of these symbols that I'm working on but I really just wanted to create some patterns and some symbols that you know I'm just excited to see how other people begin to work with them and respond to them I know in the heart in our hearth codes course the course that I offered in um, February it was a full four week course and we made scrolls but we really found you know I encourage participants to find their own symbol language and how their dialogue their own visual dialogue oh, this is good and um, <clears throat> so we were doing a lot of that and um, and so it was amazing because some of the the participants were like oh my goodness I was working with a symbol and I really liked that symbol I was drawn to it because I had a lot of symbols I was sort of suggesting for people to kind of explore and a number of people said how they just got so emotional like they just start crying or just really emoting at a deep level and they like the symbol was bringing it up and so they were saying I can really see what you mean about these things just activating you at a deep level like you don't even know why you're emotional but yet you know you are and so so many people found like their language they just found their symbols that just meant so much to them what I love about this this one too like this just reminds me of like it's it's like a floral so a lot of people like you'll see different things in the symbols like I could just see this someone who likes to do sort of abstract um, you know like flowers or something like that I could just see someone taking these and just making this whole sort of uh, grouping of flowers and, and turning them into flowers so, you know like O'Keefe kind of style like looking at flowers a little differently or someone else may see this as some kind of star or like I like a lot of these I called solar or stellar I was so inspired just by because so many of the ancient um, cultures you know older cultures really use the stars and the um, as a as their inspiration for so much of their work right so for me that's why I kind of picked a lot of the titles that sort of for these images that relate to the cosmos but I definitely saw them as a part of the sacred feminine of Gaia herself right with many of these so yeah don't a lot don't 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 be boxed in by what I may have called some of these I've tried to keep them as generic as possible so that that way they they don't like I don't bring up one idea in them and then like you can't get it out of your head <laughs> I don't want that either so let's do a couple more okay so what I also want to show you that I love to do is I love to make handprints and we did some of that as well in our course so the same thing I just take my hand because so much indigenous art oh my goodness you know how many how many times have we just seen handprints you know on cave walls and stuff like that right so nice thing about gesso it's kind of friendly for this type of thing but so I'm going to get a handprint down here good perfect okay and then I want to get um, this one here just kind of get this one on here and the magic's gonna happen of course when we <laughs> work with our spray dyes and 
the coffee and tea staining. Yep. So I'm just grabbing different stencils at this point and just putting down. See, I'm just using parts of them and just off the page and that kind of thing. So just think off the page, you know, outside the box with them. This one here. This one you just use one half. So also, um, <clears throat> what's I gonna say? Oh, like for this one, this is a good one where you could just use the inside. Like you wouldn't have to use the outside or you could just use the outside and not the inside. So that way you get a lot out of them or you could just use a bit of it. You know, half of the circle, not the whole thing. So I think they, you know, so you just kind of, we're just getting one bit of it, you know. So I think these really give the opportunity for a lot of variation. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> that stopped a little bit, but we were working with these and I was saying that like these could be stems for the flowers. You know, this sort of, so if you really kind of want to create this indigenous kind of push and pull to uh, the way you're seeing this, let's just do this one. Okay, so let's go ahead now. We got a, a good amount done. Now let's go ahead and start working images. Let me just move this stuff off and when you're ready to wash the stencils just soak them in a little bit of um, Johnson's Murphy's oil soap. So I'm gonna put this one down because I know this one needs to dry. Let's go with one of the earlier ones we did. one and just lay them in there let them soak and all this paint and stuff will just come right off of them and you know okay so what I like to do is so we're going to use some of Seth's um, coffee, I think I have the tea, we have the beige, we have some gold, we have Tim Holtz's gathered twigs, so let's start with those, and we have coffee, good old, you know, a coffee that we made in our bottle, it's still nice and fresh and good because we put that alcohol in it, so you don't get any stinky smell, and you don't get any mold or anything building up in your in your spray bottle okay so let's just oh let me see I need to have I need some tissue let me just grab some more because I like to use the tissue to sop up the excess now this is our archival tissue paper that we've used before I like to use this it sops up the extra um liquids and then like I have sitting here from earlier this is just about dry but then you know once they're done with them you can open them up and they're great papers to use in your collage 
and you have some good color on them so that's why I like using these okay so let's go ahead and first we're just going to spray um, you can start seeing the color is going to start popping so let's use some beige going to kind of spray it in some areas where the paper hasn't got any color on it yet um, so that these extra colors can kind of start seeping into the paper of course you can use any color palette you want and though the um, I use the Sumi ink so it's going to bleed a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit of bleeding, but I'm okay with that because I really want it to have this, this old, you know, look to everything. You can see how, wow, the patterns just pop. Look what that looks. Oh, that's why I love using gesso. Because you get these patterns, but they're not like just bold and you know, like too much color like the way paint can be. Because we can use these, we make these papers, we can use them as pages in books. We can, um, use them as, as collage papers. So now you just have bits and pieces that can be used in collage. I really like to get the water off of them. So that's one done. Look at that. It's like magic. See how good it looks. Oh my goodness. Really can play with these. And you can still, the thing I like about the gesso is you can still see the mark making underneath. That's why I wanted to do the mark making so that it'll come underneath the stencil. So we immediately get these really wonderful layers. Let's go ahead and... So now we can do one where you can just spray the whole thing with, um, so like, let's say if you don't want the color to catch, spray the whole thing first. Okay. This is just nice with coffee. So we just get this real subtle patterning going on. It's like magic. You get to see what's underneath. This is easy to do right on your work top, the way I like to do my coffee and tea dyeing. So let's use a little bit of some more of the beige. See, so now with the color already down there, it won't catch into the paper the same way. So you can kind of move it around, um, which is kind of nice. And then you get the splattering. So a little bit of here. Oh. and see the gesso will pick up that splattering as well so because it's gesso see how it picks up the, the bit of paint versus because it's going to it still has like a chalkiness to it so the color is going to seep down into the gesso <clears throat> which is nice and a lot of times when these dry even the backs are like phenomenal because it'll it'll dry with this pattern around them and you may just want to even use the back as collage paper and stuff like that because it's just good it's just good. <laughs> Let's do another one. Um, so definitely want to spray these. And wow, even look how this the the paper picked up that pattern. I'm gonna let that dry because I can see how that can be really neat. So this right here is pretty wet now, so I just let it just let it dry in a ball, in a bundle. Don't don't try to separate it because it will definitely, you know, tear. I think these papers are just like so much fun. So I'm gonna use some of the gold. Let me move this around. So that gold dries so nice. Let's use a little bit of coffee. This is a darker. Let me just 
just put some actual coffee down and then I want to kind of spray right into this so I make that darker and then I can move it around but I like the splatter so those splatters up there are good oh look at this and the gold is just so yummy when you dry when it dries you can really appreciate the gold so I like this. So I'm gonna leave this like it is. Just a little bit more coffee down here. Okay. And I even like the way the Sumi ink will bleed a little bit. See, it bleeds just a little bit because it's pretty indelible. Although I had done this maybe, I did these pages maybe about <clears throat> an hour before I started the video. <clears throat> so they had been dried for about an hour, but you know, let's see how this gray color looks. I had some more, oh, this one, let's see this one too. <clears throat> so, it's um. Don't be afraid to, let me grab some more tissue paper. Don't be afraid to just have at it. But I just think this is just a nice subtle way to, I like using stencils like this anyhow, because the pattern is not, it, it's there, but I feel like it's not so dominant in your face. And that's why I wanted to show everybody this technique. Cause you know, I'm really big on even, when you're using my printables or any of my stencils or anything that I create. And by the way, all these things are angel products. And so what that means is that you're free to use these in your work um, for you to sell, to gift, whatever. You don't owe me any money for it. You don't have to get my permission. Um, I just ask that, you know, obviously that they're not reproduced and sold just as the images like with nothing that you don't do anything else to it obviously I think most of you kind of can relate to that but just saying it because I know oftentimes I get asked and so I like to be um, clear on I'm gonna use this tea that um that I do want you to feel like you can use these in your work and that it is yours and I want to encourage you <clears throat> to make them your own so that's why I wanted to show you techniques too where the stencils can be more subtle they don't have to be like just so in your face, you know, I think that's important. You know, how can you play them down a bit? You know, how can you, you know, that kind of thing. I just asked that if somebody asks you about the images, oh, those images, just tell them about, you know, me and hearth codes and what the concept behind it is. And that we're all just having a journey back to things that you know mean something to us on a deeper level that's it you know tell them about robin and hearth codes and come check me out but you're free to definitely use these things 100 percent um okay i wanted to let's do this one because this one has the white and a lot of black tones and these gray tones so let's use seth's licorice you guys know i like this licorice it's black it kind of ends up being sort of a lick. It's called licorice. So it has this sort of sort of aubergine. I think it's more like an aubergine color. But um, let's just see what it looks like with the coffee. And for those of you that don't, <clears throat> they're all, I also did, I think in that video that we did the mark making, we also did I showed you how I do the co the formula for the coffee in the spray bottle. So this looks good. Look at that. Cause see that gray is going to be there. I think I'm gonna leave this one like this. I want to see this one dried. That's just a nice sort of monochromatic beigey tone, but you could just see using bits and pieces of this as a stencil. Like, I mean, you know, like this would be so neat, just that bit and see how, I used just part of that circle, the one that had the, the arrow going up in it. But it looks so much different when you just use pieces of things. Here's just a piece of that 
Grecian key. Okay, so let me grab one of these and okay, this is the one that had the hand. Let's use the let's use the licorice on this one. Get a little bit of drama. So first, let's move this around on the page. Look at that handprint coming up. Oh, I love it. Okay. So now I'm going to put a little bit more. And then let's put some of this in there. Let's just move this around. Oh, this is so good. Look at this, this licorice. So getting this dark color down is nice too. And what I was noticing is that you can actually do a mono print by putting this tissue paper down flat right on top and then letting it dry and there'll be this sort of like mono print on here of oh, what was down oh look at that oh look how the hand popped oh this is just good stuff look at that it looks so just you know natural <laughs> oh, i love it so you know what let's use also I think I just have this one sheet left. I have one more over there. I also have um, Tim Holtz's Distressed in the Black. Oh, let's put this. It's in here somewhere. This is a computer. Okay, this is Black Soot. Let's just see how his does. We'll use the Black Soot. But it's always good to put coffee or tea. You can do tea. If your thing is tea, make a tea up. Black tea is always nice. Um, and did I use that tissue already? Because oh. sometimes people say they don't really like the smell of coffee. I'm a coffee drinker, so I like the way coffee smells. And I find when I mix the coffee in my bottle using the alcohol it also seems to take the coffee smell away it's like so you can't hardly even smell it so that's just a nice tip um oh look at this let's see let's get some black let's get enough down there let's move this around oh look at that oh my goodness Tell me I'm not excited by myself here. Look at this. Mm, that black is good. And so the way we, obviously the way we get rid of like that stippling, that's why I put this down. And it sort of evens out the movement. So you don't kind of get the little do 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 all over the place, you know? <laughs> the do 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 <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> See, it just removes it all, and it's just so good. That's good. So that's the distress. So if you have the Tim Holtz dis distress things, they're going to work good. Mm. And see how this just, it just pops the white. But, I mean, that's just a fun piece that you could just use in collaging. This would be great. This bit right here in a collage. So good. All righty, might as well do one more. And then, so I had one more sheet here let's change the palette up I have one of my other favorite one from Tim Holtz is the bundled sage I like bundled sage so it'll be a green let's just get that on here so remember to always get your base down I like the coffee because I just like the way it adds an old world quality to the print, but you could just spray water. You don't have to use coffee. If you're using the, the dyes and the, 
with dress stains and all that, you can spray water down. I find that the coffee just interacts with the colors and just makes it look, you know, more aged. But of course, you know, try different things, but water works just fine. Oh, that looks so good, the way that comes up. Okay, so let's spray some of this bundled sage on here. Kind of go for the puddles. The other thing that I like about the um, coffee is that it puts sort of a brown tone in most of um, the colors that you're using. So it kind of gives more of that, that old world. So let's put a little bit of Seth's licorice. I think it'll be nice with this, with this uh, green. Okay. Good. This has been good. This is a good session. A lot of nice papers. Can't wait to use these. And of course, use these in your collage this week in your journal. You know, we'll start working with these. And, you know, I'm sure you already have stencils. So this technique you can get right into. Um, even if you're going to order my stencils. Or if you're not, the, the technique is still great. With stencils you already have. Things you already are in love with. Um, let me use some of this. You know, so yeah. Just another way to kind of create our papers this is the gold this gold just dries so amazing okay okay so we'll let this dry and then I'll be back to show you all the finished dried sheets all right see you in a second Okay, so here are the papers all nice and dry. I thought I'd put like a nice fresh sheet down so that we could really appreciate the colors because I got messed to the left of me and messed to the right of me. Um, okay, so these are what they look like all nice and dry. Hope you guys enjoy this. Look, how, just see how they just pop. And I just think that the white is like so good. Now you can slightly stain it a little bit using the sprays or the dyes, especially Seth's dyes because they are a dye and they'll stay permanent. So if you want it like a little color in here, you could just, you know, we've done that before when we worked with the texture pastes and stuff like that. We just put a little bit of color in them. So, um, but I just like the idea of them being pale. I like the idea of them being neutral. And I just feel that they work so well with this technique because it really has an old world look to it. Um, I think it really plays up the layering, you know, um, gesso like this plays up the layering so you can really see underneath it. And then with staining and dyeing the paper like we did, it really allows the, the paint color to kind of slide underneath the layer of the gesso. So it really does. Oh, look at this one. It's so cute. <laughs> I like these. And even on the back backs are interesting where that just so really just creates a pattern so you might find that some of the backs you really would like to use as elements in collage so this is the one that we had I had a little extra ink on that stencil and so when I remember I was using it it made the gray tone so you can kind of see with if you have a little bit of color in there what they do the backs I think are just beautiful as well love the flowers so this is the gold. Now you can see where the gold is really just uh, so nice. This was the green with a little bit of the licorice. So this is gathered twig. And um, Seth Apter's licorice. Love this, um, this symbol. I just love it. Remember how I just only used the inside? <clears throat> of that symbol it really came out nicely so you just use bits and pieces this is good 
this looks like this could be like cave art, you know? <laughs> like you just uh, taking a picture of a cave wall or something. I love it. And the back just looks good. There are those little bursts. This has a little bit of color in it, you can see there. And this is where we just did, um, well, we did the tea, the coffee staining. So you can see what the coffee staining looks like without any color. It just has this really nice light um, staining to it. And then we sprayed a little bit of the, I think, beige in there. But you can just really see how just by itself, just the layering is really good. Now, this is the one where we got a little bit of the gray going on in it. And here, once again, just had to let my puppy in. He was whining. So it gave that little bit extra color. And this one, I only did the coffee staining on. So you can see with just the coffee, or, or if you use a black tea, it would be similar. All these papers are just really ready to go with collaging, working them. And even as book pages, I mean, they're just... What I like about this technique is that as a book page, I mean, look at that. That's just ready to go. And then you still have stuff on the inside so if you wanted to do this technique and alternate the pages so that you could have it as a writing journal or you know sort of like um you know a junk journal type of concept um these inside pages are great and they're already ready to be written on without having to do anything else to them and then this is the one with the licorice so this is the hand print i just love that just subtle, beautiful. And this had the licorice. So you can see how the licorice really just lays over top of that print. So there we have it. The stencils with the um, with stuff you already have. Many of you already have some form of the stains or dyes. Most of us already have gesso or gesso is pretty easy to make. Um with some stuff that you can just give from the dollar store. So if you having a hard time finding gesso, just look up on YouTube how to make your own gesso. And it's really kind of straightforward. And then you may already have stencils. Use those. If you if you like this collection, Hearth Codes 1, then please um, join me um, with the link below at iStencils. And, you know, go ahead and jump in and get whichever ones you'd love to work with along with your free gift. And once again... This, I'll show you, this is the free gift. So this is the one that's going to be, so you can't, you won't be able to purchase this one um, because I always have one that is not for purchase, but that can be, you get when you order over a certain amount. And so this is going to be this one. And this is a really nice one and you could do so much with it. So there we have it. Alrighty, well take care. If you enjoyed this video, please thumb it up. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit that bell so you get all the notifications. And enjoy week 30. And which is looking at our seasonal palettes. Take and this was a good one to do because we worked with a lot of colors and we went from warms to cools. Um so yeah, play with your, this is a good project to play with your palettes as well. Working with what you've already been working with, maybe try some new colors and just make note of what um, you're enjoying. All right, take care. Love you guys. See you next week for week 31. We're moving right along and please, please enjoy yourself in your studio. Enjoy the process. And most importantly, just have fun. Whatever you're doing, no criticism, no self-judgment. The only thing is have fun. All right, take care. Bye-bye.